Well, let me ask you, now I'm a, I'm a new member, I've only been in the guild two years, yes. okay, and I came to my nodding interest later in life. You know, when uh, if you were going to talk to potential guild members, you know, what would you say is the is the benefits of being in the, a member of the guild and, uh, and that well, sort of thing? Well, obviously it's a specialist organization. Mm -hmm. Not every member of the public is going to be interested in dotting. Mm -hmm. But most people want to know how to tie up parcels and to do up their shoelaces properly mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. And to demonstrate a few basic knots, I suppose, introduces people and then if they've got any interest at all, they're likely to want mm -hmm. to follow it up. And as you look so, back over all these years of your own membership in the Guild, you know, what's been really important to you that's come out of all of that? Well, I suppose it's the fellowship of other people that are interested in the same thing. Uh, a lot of people who are keen on knot time tend to feel they're in isolation. Mm -hmm. And then you meet a crowd of other people who've got the same interests as you, and you swap tails and swap different methods of uh, tied knots. Particularly uh, some of the things like Turk's Head. I've been talking to a man today who is still trying uh, all sorts of different uh, starts and uh, turns of uh, uh, Turk's Head. He's been sitting here nearly all day just doing that on his lap. Right. Uh, it's not my line, mine. I'm more interested in practical rope work. I, I have rigged ships uh -huh. and uh, spliced wire and uh, that sort of thing. I'd right. rather do rather apply knotting to the practical application. More than the decorative knotting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've done tests on various knots to find out which were strongest under certain circumstances mm -hmm. and things like that. Well, I've always heard that the eye splice is the strongest knot. Well, the eye splice is a very good example, yes. But uh, there are a few variations on it. Mm -hmm. And with modern synthetic ropes, mm -hmm. they're smooth, of course, because yes. they're made from continuous filaments instead right. of short fibers. Right. You've got to have a lot more tucks in than you would have for a, 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 a natural fiber rope. That's right. I first came across them, for instance, during the war. I was in the Royal Air Force, and I was on a, a station, an airfield, as you call it, where they were training army pilots, army glider pilots, for the invasion of Europe. And uh, we were using tug aircraft, first of all with hemp ropes, mm -hmm. and they were only given a 10 tug life, and then they were scrapped. Mm -hmm. Then in came nylon. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen nylon before. That was the first synthetic I'd seen. That would have been about 1942 or 3. Mm -hmm. And that has got an incredible stretch, of course, mm -hmm. and we were using them almost indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Well, so the first president is here after 20 years, still coming to meetings, and That's still right. enjoying the fellowship, and encouraging people to uh, take a look at nodding. That's it. Thanks for your time. Okay.